The new Tron film came out last week, and seeing the trailer reminded me of just how much of an impact the previous film's visual effects had on me. In terms of being instantly recognisable and iconic, I'd say they're right up there with the lightsaber. In particular, the shot of the light cycle assembling in mid-air really blew my mind at the time. So for this video, I've had a go at making some of those effects myself. And there we go, it was a really fun scene to tackle. Before we get started, if you're interested, all the project files and assets from this video are available on my Patreon. You can download the rigged models and environments that I made, as well as the animated Blender project files and the nuke scripts for the compositing. Consider checking it out, it helps a lot to continue making videos like this. But anyway, let's get started. I turned this whole video around in a couple of weeks, so I didn't want to make everything from scratch. With that in mind, I hopped onto the internet and sourced a couple of models that would get me started. I found some great models for the light cycle and for the Tron character. I tweaked their shaders slightly to get them looking more photorealistic, and then they were ready to go. I made the environment of the stadium myself. There were a few online, but I figured it would be quite easy to make it. It's mostly dark, so you don't have to see a huge amount of detail in the background. The key things I wanted to hit were having some nice lights to add some detail, obviously people in the crowd, and getting some small details of reflections and interesting textures in the side walls. The first thing I did to start working on the animation for the shot was hop onto Mixamo and grab some motion capture of a diving forward roll. This was the perfect jumping off point to start with, excuse the pun. I then took this animation and cut off the keyframes toward the end so the character never goes into a roll, and then animated the character into the final position for the shot, which was mostly getting the arm movement for when the handlebars start to appear, and animating the legs into the driving position. Once it was animated, I then scaled the distance between the keyframes at a certain point so it goes from normal speed to slow motion. Next I started working on the animation for the hologram. As you'll see slightly later in the video, a massive amount of the look of the hologram came from the compositing stage, but the underlying base of it is still the animation and the shaders that I set up in Blender, and then I can enhance them all later, so it's very much a two-stage process. To begin with, I started off with very simple geometric shapes, literally extruding cubes and cylinders out, and using lots of mirror modifiers to copy their animation to the other side. I parented all of the new hologram objects that I was creating to the rig of the character so they would move together. Then I would model their shapes and put them into their final position where I wanted them to end up, and then animate them backwards to disappear, which a lot of the time was scaling them down to zero, and I also used a lot of shape keys on the objects to make them squish down and extend as they're revealing. This gives the animation some extra detail so it feels like they're actually transforming and moving into place rather than just everything scaling up. Once the handlebars were done, I then moved on to doing the wheels and some of the objects with inside the light cycle. I had loads of GIFs of this particular shot in a pure ref document, and I was just watching them over and over again frame by frame, and seeing exactly what kind of shapes were being created within the light cycles, how they were revealed, and trying my best to do something similar. I created some objects inside that resembled things like pistons, and axles, engines, various sci-fi mechanical parts, and then again I used shape keys so once they appear and scale up it feels like they carry on extending, which gives the animation some more life. None of the objects that I modelled are actually particularly detailed, but I found more success in just adding lots and lots of small very simple parts of geometry, and in many cases I'm parenting objects and then parenting things to those objects and parenting things to those objects to give it some more perceived complexity. For example with these engine pieces, once they were done and animated the shape keys, I then created a couple of rings that were parented to them, and then I had the rings appear and move along the length of the object, giving it some secondary animation. The shaders for all of these objects took a bit of experimenting. In the films it's kind of a wireframe effect, but using the wireframe shader in Blender you can see that it adds way too many lines for all of the different faces. The effect from the film is much more simplistic, and it just creates an outline on the important parts of the shapes which keeps them readable without getting too messy. In the end I settled on a couple of different approaches, as well as obviously doing a lot of compositing on top of this later. For some of the objects I used the Fresnel and Layer Weight nodes, which gives you this kind of backlit light effect. The idea here will be that the black parts are transparent, and the white parts will be the coloured part of the holograms. This way they're mainly transparent, but have some edge lighting that will give you some definition to the shapes. Then for some other parts I did actually use the wireframe node within the shader editor, and then some of the smaller parts are just a mix between a translucent and an emission shader, and I'm mixing it about 50-50, so they have some glow, but they're mainly just a block colour, but you can still see through them a little bit. That worked for the wheels, the handlebars, and lots of the small pieces that appear inside of the light cycle, but then for the main body I actually used quite a different technique. Rather than modelling a load of extra detail and creating something quite complex, I created a model that roughly mimicked the shape of the light cycle, and then I hand painted a load of lines onto this which I would use as an emission shader, and everything else would be transparent. And then once the painting was done, I used a boolean object, and animated it to slowly wipe this whole body object on, so it starts off completely removed by the boolean, and slowly animates to reveal it throughout the shot. And as you can see, even just from looking at the viewport render, it gives that whole middle section of the light cycle a lot of shape and definition. 
I also brought in the actual model of the light cycle and had this parented to the same object so it was moving in the same space. And then when it came to rendering, I split everything out into different layers, which gave me the flexibility in compositing to reveal things at different times and create this really multi-layered reveal effect. So in total, there's four different render passes. There's the character on its own, then the hologram on its own, then the stadium with everything else set to indirect only, which means you still see the reflections of the character in the floor. And then finally, the light cycle on its own, again with everything else set to indirect only, so it still has the reflections of the stadium lights and everything on the body. And now it's time to make it look awesome in compositing. To begin with, I just combine all the different layers together, merging them over the top of each other, and then I started working on the effect to reveal the bike. For the light cycle, as well as the beauty render, I also have a utility render, which contains things like a position pass, the depth pass, and a few other things that I can really utilize in the compositing stage. I start out by using the position pass and selecting a point on the front of the light cycle for where the reveal will begin and then expand from. Then I keyframed it from its smallest size to slowly grow throughout the shot. This approach using the position pass looks a lot more interesting than just doing this with a 2D roto shape or a mask, because you can see as well as moving left to right, it's also moving back into the depth of the bike as well as moving upwards in 3D space. So you start off by seeing the bottom of the wheel and then it slowly reveals the top and you can see inside of the wheel arches. It's a much more complex effect and works really well. Then I can use this alpha that I've created from the position pass as a mask on the light cycle, so it only appears within the white of the mask that I've created. This is the basis of the effect, but it currently doesn't look very interesting, so now it's time to add lots of light effects and extra details to the edge to make it look more complicated. I started by doing an edge detect on the alpha for the position pass. This gives me an outline as the effect is moving, and I can use this to create an outline for that leading edge of the effect. To begin with, I shuffle out the normals pass from the utility render that I did, and I used a gizmo called Rotate normals which allows you to isolate an individual channel of the normals and move them around, essentially creating a fake relighting effect in compositing. So I created some additional directional light and then took this new normals lighting pass and multiplied it over the edge detect that I'd created. This now makes it look like the light cycle is being illuminated at the edges, and now it just needs some sort of really hot glow effect that moves with that outline as it reveals the bike. To create this effect I actually bought in the geometry of the light cycle from Blender. I'm going to use the UVs of the 3D object to apply some textures onto, which will make the effect even more exciting. In this case I went onto Production Crate and downloaded a few suitable elements. I found some really cool animated textures of LED walls that I thought would be perfect for this effect. I picked one that I thought would work well, and then used a tile node in Nuke which scales it up massively so I can make the details smaller on the 3D model. With this plugged into the 3D geometry of the bike that I bought in from Blender, it then applies this as a texture over the whole thing and maps it on the UVs, and again multiplied it over the edge detect that I'd created earlier, which just isolates it onto the edges rather than the effect appearing everywhere. And now you can probably tell how this starts to come together. I didn't want this effect to be on the edges the whole time, so once it's revealed a section I created a 2D rotor shape that would then remove that effect from within inside the mask. I blurred it quite a lot so it had a nice gradiated fall off rather than being too harsh and animated the mask to follow the reveal effect but a few frames behind so that small amount of delay creates the leading edge effect and then removes all of the leftover stuff in its wake. So all of those techniques that I've just showed combined with an ungodly amount of glow creates the hologram effect. But we're not quite done yet, I still need to make the environment look cool. So moving backwards in the shot I start to work on adding some atmosphere and creating the light effects that will really bring the shot to life. I isolated out the emission pass for the stadium and added some glow onto this to give the light some extra bloom. Then I did a really common compositing technique that you can do on top of the whole shot Shot. You add a Kia node and then crunch it down to cut out just the highlights and then do a load of different instances of blur, starting quite small at about 5 and then going up to 10, 20, 40, pretty much doubling it every time until you get to 3 or 400. And then if you plus all of these together, you get these really cool streaky, almost anamorphic flares and you can then plus this subtly back over the top of your whole shot and you get some great light interaction and flaring coming off all the hotspots in your shot. I rendered with overscan from Blender so I can add some lens distortion onto these, especially this shot as the 3D camera is a 14mm lens so there will be lots of barrel distortion at the edges. I also did a soft defocus and radial blur on the corners of the frame to add some softness and mess up the perfect look of the CG render and for the same reason added some chromatic aberration in the corners as well. Because it's a very CG shot and there's not even a huge amount of colour, the renders on their own feel very sterile so it's important with a shot like this to go in and add loads of artefacts like chromatic aberration, lens distortion, lens flares, dirt on the lens adding some organic imperfections of shooting stuff for real back into the CG and that's what really brings it to life. Speaking of which, you can see me multiplying some textures of lens dirt over the top of the footage here, so whenever there's light sources passing through the frame they pick up some dirt on the lens. I also added a sky outside of the stadium. I actually generated this photo of some clouds using ChatGPT because I was feeling lazy and didn't want to search for one. It wasn't quite the right perspective so I had to transform it into place and use a few different patches to make it work and then once it was in place I projected it on a 3D sphere and rendered it through the 3D camera from Blender that I imported into Nuke so it had the same camera move on it. It's quite subtle but it gives the sky some nice detail rather than being a flat colour. 
As a final finishing touch to the compositing, I went back onto Production Crate and found some more elements of lens flares. I was specifically looking for flares that had a similar movement to what was happening in my shots. I found a few really cool ones that had some flaring at the side of the frame. So I put them into place, offset them to be at the right time, and then graded them a little bit to be the same color as the hologram, and then put this over the top of everything in the shot. Once the compositing was finished, I brought the shots back into Resolve and added a color grade. The shots already looked quite good out of Nuke, so I didn't do anything too crazy. I added a small amount of contrast, a film print emulation to make them look a bit more cinematic, and then quite a healthy dose of film grain. This was particularly important because I denoised a lot of the renders in Blender to make them cleaner, so without any noise or grain they feel quite lifeless. The film grain really brings everything back to life, and adds some moving texture into all the blacks and the flat colours. And so finally, once again, here is the finished sequence. I really surprised myself at how much I enjoyed making this video. I knew it would be fun, but once I started seeing the hologram coming together, it was extremely exciting. Hopefully you think it looks as cool as I do. Again, if you're interested, you can grab the project files on my Patreon if you'd like to download this stuff and have a play yourself. With all that said, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing, and I will see you in the next one.